It's really not about data ownership. Everybody likes to think it is, especially the car manufacturers. It's really about data access, right? Because as, as, as Michelle eloquently said, data enables us to, as a currency, um, provide utility, functionality, and revenue in some cases back and forth across different content providers, different originators, and even, even you as a consumer. So um, this is the single most important feature of having the ability to probe in-vehicle data is making and revolutionizing the way we think about transportation. So whether it's a vehicle that you own or whether it's a vehicle that you share or whether it's a vehicle that you lease, it's about the ability to have data from the vehicle change the way you transact, mobilize, and, and, and own or not own, for that matter, the, 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 the vehicle. So this is something that's really exciting uh, and has formed the platform for this disruption, creative disruption to occur, coupled with the fact that the internet of everything, as I call it, because I don't think it's really interesting to like have two pairs of shoes talk to each other if they don't really communicate. But what we're having is, you know, with cheap sensors and with pr fast processing, with storage capabilities, we're actually having um, platforms starting to talk to each other that never did. I mean, how cool is it if you leave your home and 15 minutes later you get a display rendering message on your HMI, on your vehicle display that says, by the way, you've left the perimeter of the geofencing location. Did you know that you left your garage door open? Because the sensor talks to the vehicle, knows it's left a certain distance, and can activate an alert to you, or push an alert to you, which you can respond interactively and say, yes, I would like to close my garage door, or no, my husband's in the house doing some work in there. This is the kind of really exciting Communication, the, the, the vehicle is becoming the next generation communication platform, whether we like it or not, because people want it to, be, to, to occur. People want this convenience. People want the timeliness, the speed, and the ability to have a car in its stationary form for 23 hours of the day because the average person uses their car for an hour. So sitting in there its park, in its park position, just like a, a smartphone sitting here next to me can be a, a beautiful object. It can also do a lot of things while it's stationary because of this thing called connecting the vehicle. The vehicle connectivity now is enabling the next generation of creative disruption because now vehicles can actually start to do clever things. They can be receptors of packages. You can remotely access your vehicle, lock and unlock your vehicle while you're sitting at work to have flowers delivered to it. There is a multitude of services that are going to be built off the backbone of this creative technology coming through and our ability to link. What does it mean? It means there's going to be a lot of new players coming into the industry, a lot of fragmentation of the industry, a lot of the names you never, you, that uh, traditional automotive, I, I showed a, a chart the other day, it was kind of like one of these big bubble charts that you, know, you, you show in quant class, <clears throat> showing all these new, and people kept asking me, who's that, and, and, and what do they do, and how are they adding? These people are all coming in with their respective technologies, and they're owning or trying to own pieces of the value chain. So naturally, if you're sitting around as a traditional OE or a tier one or tier two supplier, you better be darn sure that the market's being you know, encroached on. You have Apple, you have Google, the new consumer electronics coming through tethered and mirror-linked approaches rendering onto the display. What, what is the, the fight is for who can get access to the data because the data enables you to communicate things back and forth, which en enhances revenue channels. So um, enabling technology of you know, you know, being, lighting up the cars or lighting up transportation, having you know, the, 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 all the sensor capability embedded into the vehicle. So now the vehicle has cameras, it has radars, it has LIDARs, so it can actually know at any given point where it is, not only on a map, but on, on the road within two or three inches of accuracy through precision, high precision GPS. These are enabling the vehicle to be very, very intelligent. And for God's sakes, I mean, look what happened when autopilot was introduced to the airline industry. Computers ought to be driving vehicles. Most 90% of 
of, of, of accidents or crashes, accidents actually don't exist, crashes are caused by human error, right? And sure, there's going to be a difficult period where you have manual driving and automated driving existing on the same roads. But I do believe that we have to start thinking of a computer driving our vehicles and creating those necessary levels of intelligence that are only just starting right now as we're here. And I wish I could live to maybe 100 or 130 so I can see really this whole thing come into fruition because it probably gonna, is going to take you know, much longer than we thought. But it's a really exciting time to be alive and to be part of this. <laughs>